Fae Kai's Craig Stood the honour on the leaving rock of Kai's Craig, grin the low, being fire black, pit me in mine in ninety act, the nick lift red for summer soldiers' trysts, drum herk and grandsha farmer's sons, cotton chills, green boys agreeable, hurts a dun. Fiona MacDonald reads her poem, Fae Cowie's Craig. Her passion for Ulster Scots began in her school days. It adds colour to whatever I'm trying to write. It's, it's a very expressive language and I, I just find it speaks volumes really more than I, I could maybe do in, in the English language. Saf yen smear, a stand looking out my gavel window, er oil rock fields a yellow flared ones, drocked grass, and tumult down stain dikes take high's Craig. Ulster Scots. The language that came to Ulster with the Scottish settlers of the plantation in the early 17th century. It was the ordinary folk the guys who were going out um, and telling the land and minding the livestock that, that held on to that Scots lowland tongue. It is the language of Burns, but we had folk writing in that language before Burns was heard tell of. It's not, in every case, an imitation of Burns. So it's lowland Scots. It's basically a variant of Northumbrian, if you go back far enough, that is. And that's what was brought in to Northern Ireland. I say Northern Ireland, it was the island of Ireland, but it was mainly the northeast corner by the Lowland Scots settlers. The rhyming weavers is a term used to describe working class poets from the 18th and 19th centuries, whose poems are rich with examples of Ulster Scots. This is a poem by Thomas Given, who came at the end of this writing tradition of poetry, and it's called A Song for February. Day in and day out on his old ferrant loom, time lengthens the wab of the past. Dame Nature steps in like a lamp to the room, her ee to the simmer of life gain bloom. Say, winter slips by wi' its mirth and its gloom, as spring has appearing at last. The robin gets up and he locks in his glee in view of the prospect, say bro. Sits his head to the side with its feathers a gee as he spies a bit snowdrop at the foot of the tree and says to himself, I'll head in these to pre by and by when the splash is a wall. In the 1950s, Robert Gregg pioneered the academic study of Ulster Scots. He was able to record, of course, from a generation of speakers no longer with us. Uh, we're, we're talking about, say, the 40s and 50s, maybe early 60s. That generation, who were his informants, have passed away. But uh, his work uh, preserves the evidence for uh, pronunciation. But perhaps the most important aspect of uh, Bob Gregg's work is the mapping of the boundaries of the Ulster Scots speaking area. It's the only attempt that has ever been made to map the Ulster Scots speaking areas. They gathered together uh, 125 informants, mostly of the older age group, who were uh, natural Ulster Scots speakers, um, and he mapped their location in what is fairly typical horseshoe shape around the north and east coasts of Northern Ireland. He sent out questionnaires to these folk and interviewed them. He used just one word items to map where the, the line could be drawn between the Ulster Scots speaking areas and the adjoining Northern Hiberno English speaking areas. These words were exclusively Ulster Scots. 
a lot of what he got was funny material, old saws and, and yarns from the country. The thing about Bob Gregg was that nobody ever thought he was laughing at them, he was laughing with them. And that is the difference with so many academics. They are up there in the ivory tower somewhere and they're looking at this language as if they were turning over a stone and seeing what crawled out. But that was never the way with Bob Gregg. He still identified with the um, vernacular speech that he was studying, which is the difference. In 2000, Ulster Scots was officially recognised as a language under the European Charter for Regional and Minority Languages. Like many minority languages, it faces an uncertain future in the longer term. OK, guys, we're going to start off with a wee bit of Hickory Dickory Dock. So what are the key words? What are the words that you have to watch out for? Yen. Yen, good boy, Cameron. And what's the other ones? Dun. Dun. And what else? Spit. It. And... Moose. Moose. Okay, so we've got moose and hoof. Louise Morrow is a music and drama teacher and works across Northern Ireland teaching children Ulster Scots. This is Landhead Primary and they're set in the heart of North Antrim here. Well, this fairly new project in the school where we are trying to develop Ulster Scots. The grandparents in the home would speak in Ulster Scots and the children would speak that way. They're not getting Ulster Scots in other places. And it's really important that we do preserve the language of Ulster Scots. from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.